So today we're going to be looking at the gas exchange in the leaf of a plant. So we'll look at how do plants exchange gases, what is the structure of the dicotyledonous plant leaf, how is a leaf adapted for efficient gas exchange. So, um, obviously all plants respire, so they will take in oxygen and give out carbon dioxide during respiration. And some plant cells, like palisade cells, will also photosynthesize. So they will take in carbon dioxide and they will give out oxygen. So sometimes one pro the, the gases from one process can be used for the gases used for the other process. Um, so they don't need to exchange gases with the external air as much. Um, so the volumes of the gases that actually need to be taken in and given out depends on the balance between the rates of photosynthesis and respiration. Um, so when photosynthesizing, some of the carbon dioxide will come from respiration um, and some of the oxygen from photosynthesis can be used by the plant for respiration. But most of the time they have to exchange the gases with the external air. Obviously when it's, the plant isn't photosynthesizing in the dark, um, the oxygen will need to be taken from outside of the leaf because there will be no oxygen produced in the dark. So looking at the structure of a plant leaf, um, at the top you have the waxy cuticle, which helps to conserve water. It's a waterproof layer. You then have the upper epidermis, which um, is a transparent layer, which allows the light to pass through. You have the palisade um, layer, and you can see that the palisade cells are cuboidal and they're arranged in nice neat rays, rows to maximise um, light absorption. And they will also have lots of chloroplasts for photosynthesis. You then have the spongy mesophyll layer, which is made up of mesophyll cell cells. And the reason it's called a spongy layer is because it has air spaces. And these air spaces um, mean that the carbon dioxide can diffuse straight through the gas phase um, and almost all gas to get to the palisade cell and oxygen can go through these air spaces because diffusion is faster in the gaseous phase. Um, so spongy mesophyll cells, spongy mesophyll layer has air spaces. Then on the lower epidermis, you have the epidermal cells, but you also have these um, stomata or singular is stoma, these are surrounded by guard cells and these guard cells can open or or close depending on what gases the plant needs and also whether the it's too hot so the plant would lose water then the guard cells would close the stomata. So for a gas exchange system um, the gas exchange of the plant, no living cell is far from the external air source, so the source of oxygen and carbon dioxide, so there's a short diffusion pathway. The diffusion takes place in the gas phase because of the air spaces, which is more rapid than if it was in water. So overall, plants have a short, fast diffusion pathway, and the leaf has a large surface area to volume ratio, so you don't actually need a special, specialised transport system to move gases in and out, because it happens just by simple diffusion, because the diffusion pathway is short enough. So the adaptations of a leaf for rapid diffusion are they have a thin, flat shape, which means that the diffusion pathway is short, and they also have a large surface area. They have many small stomata in the lower epidermis, which allows them to um, exchange gases. And there's lots of air spaces throughout the mesophyll, which means that the diffusion takes place in the gaseous phase, which is a lot quicker than if it was in water. So just a little look at stomata. So stomata are little pores, mainly on the underside of the leaf, um, because that's more guarded from... Um, the wind etc and each stomata pore is surrounded by two guard cells which can open and close the stomata pore um, so they can control the rate of gas exchange um, and because plants are terrestrial organisms just like insects they lose a lot of water by evaporation so they need to balance the conflicting needs of the fact they need to exchange gases but also 
fact that they need to control water loss. Um, so what they could do is close the smarter at times where the water loss would be so excessive that it wouldn't be worth opening the smarter. Okay, Judge. Thank you.